my angels, it's Haley Reese, and today's video is super exciting because it is combining two of my favorite things to talk about on my channel, a real life case and a paranormal case. Today we're going to be talking about the first known court case in the United States where somebody tried to plead their innocence by claiming they were possessed while committing a murder. This case is absolutely crazy and by the end of it I want to know if you guys believe he was truly possessed in the time of that murder or if you think he was using it in order to receive less jail time or even get off. Make sure you let me know in the comments below. But without further ado, let's just dive right on into this case because you guys, this is a big one and there are a lot of things I gotta talk about. So the trial of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, also known as the Devil Made Me Do It case, is the first known case in the United States that went to court where somebody tried to say they were not guilty on the terms of having been possessed during the murder. This is also an Ed and Lorraine Warren case which just makes this all the more interesting. In 1980 in Brookfield, Connecticut, a family that consisted of the mother, Judy Glatzel, the father, Carl Glatzel, the daughter, Debbie Glatzel, and the youngest son, David Glatzel, were about to experience something out of a horror film. Now the youngest son, David, was 11 at the time his family moved into this rental home in order to fix it up for future residents. Now David was a really good kid. He was always happy-go-lucky, really easy going, so when he started having horrifying nightmares each and every night, and his bright and cheery and wonderful energy began becoming timid and off and scared, it raised a lot of concern for the family. He began waking up from these nightmares while describing what he had seen in them. And he claimed within his nightmares he was seeing a man with big black eyes, a thin face with animal features, jagged teeth, pointed ears, and hoofs. He called him the Beast Man, and David would say that this Beast Man would tell him to beware. David's mother would start talking to him about what was going on, and he began telling her that this Beast Man said that he was going to take his soul. It got to the point where David was so terrified that Debbie, his older sister, had her fiance move in to try to calm David's nerves. Her fiance being Arnie Johnson. And he did move in and did his absolute best in order to make David feel as though there was nothing to be afraid of. They had hoped that when Arnie moved in, things would start to get better, but things in fact did not get better. Scratches and bruises began appearing on David and he really said this beast man wanted to take his soul. Odd noises started coming from the attic and when Arnie would go to investigate, he couldn't find any reason for these noises. Where it got even worse was when David's nightmares became a reality and he began seeing the beast man in his day-to-day -day life during the day wide awake. He said that this monster would appear to him as an old man with a white beard and that he was dressed in just a flannel shirt and jeans. So now he wasn't like looking like this monster anymore. He just came to him like this, but he knew that it was the beast man. With nowhere else to go, the family actually turned to their church and a priest came to bless their home, which they hoped would make things better. But if anything, it made things a million times worse because now this entity was really angry. The sounds in the attic became louder, David's dreams and daytime visions became even more terrifying, and then David started to hiss at his family and talk in multiple voices. He even started to quote the book Paradise Lost. Now somebody would actually have to sleep with David because he became so terrified that people would have to stay up and watch him because he would wake up like every 30 minutes screaming and even have seizures. Unsure of what to do, the priest actually reached out to none other than Ed and Lorraine Warren. And Ed and Lorraine Warren came to speak with David. Now actually, Lorraine Warren told People Magazine this exact quote. While Ed interviewed the boy, I saw a black misty form next to him, which told me we were dealing with something of a negative nature. Soon the child was complaining that invisible hands were choking him and there were red marks on him. He said that he had a feeling of being hit. So that was her quote to People Magazine. It became very obvious to the Warrens that David was in fact possessed. According to Lorraine Warren, the Warrens along with four priests, I believe, held exorcisms to expel 43 demons from David. Here's where things got bad. During one of these exorcisms, it is said that Arnie Johnson taunted a demon. That he told the demon that it wasn't anything and basically to sum it up said, I bet you wouldn't come into me. Now I should note, the Warrens actually spoke 
so highly of Arnie or who Arnie was prior to having taunted a demon. They even said that if you had a son, this was the type of son that you would want. Like he was an amazing man. So flashing forward, Debbie and Arnie decided it was time to move out of their parents' home. Debbie was hired by Alan Bono to be a dog groomer and he would actually wind up being their landlord as well. So she was working for him and living in his home. After moving in together, Debbie started to notice that Arnie was acting really strange in behavior that even resembled what David had been doing before. So she started to fear that the same thing that happened to her brother was now happening to her fiance. Apparently he would fall into like a trance-like state where he would begin to growl and hiss at people. But later when he would come out of this state, he would have no recollection or memory of what had occurred. Here's what happened next. On February 16th, 1981, Arnie called into work sick choosing to actually spend his day with Debbie. He went to meet Debbie and his sister Wanda at their job at the kennel. I should also note Debbie's nine-year-old cousin was also at the kennel as well. Alan Bono showed up, taking them all to lunch at like a local bar, and he began drinking heavily. When they returned back to the kennel, there was an odd feeling in the air and all of a sudden, Alan and Arnie started fighting. All of a sudden, Arnie started to apparently growl and hiss and fall into this trance-like state. So Debbie was trying to get everybody out of the room while they were arguing because she sensed something really bad was gonna happen. That's when Alan grabbed a hold of nine-year-old Mary and refused to let go. Arnie pulled a five-inch pocket knife out of his pocket and began to stab Alan. Alan suffered horrible wounds and would later die. Arnie fled the scene. Arnie was actually discovered three kilometers from where the murder had been committed and was held on a bail of $125,000. Now apparently when they found him, he was super confused and didn't have any recollection of what had just occurred. The day after the murder, Lorraine Warren notified the Brookfield police claiming that he was possessed at the time of the murder. They immediately went forward with the defense of demonic possession and even planned to fly in exorcist specialists from Europe and also threatened to subpoena priests who wouldn't come forward with what had happened. They literally threatened the priests that had oversaw the exorcism of David Glatzel and needed them to cooperate with the defense. The trial took place at Connecticut's Superior Court in Danbury beginning October 28, 1981. But their defense of him claiming to have been possessed during the time of the murder did not hold up in court. So in turn, they had to change their theory and they pushed forward saying it was in self-defense because he had taken the nine-year-old little girl in his arms and he felt threatened, so it was in self-defense. The jury found Arnie Johnson guilty of first-degree manslaughter, giving him a 10 to 20 year sentence of which he would only spend five years. Here's where things get a little bit messy. In 1983, Gerald Brittle, with the assistance of Lorraine Warren, published a book on the incident titled The Devil in Connecticut. Now, it was said that some of the profits of this book were going to go towards the family and go towards getting Arnie out of prison. However, after the book's republication in 2006 by iUniverse, the Glatzels sued the authors and book publishers for violating their right to privacy. They actually said that this whole possession story was a hoax thought up by Ed and Lorraine Warren to, and I quote, exploit David's mental illness. They said that the Warrens told them that this specific story and approach would make them millions and they'd be able to get Arnie out of prison. However, Arnie and Debbie, who are now married, stand by the Warrens with their theory of demonic possession and that it's 1 million percent the truth. Debbie and Arnie claim that the Glassels are suing solely for monetary purposes. So there's that. And that is basically the case of Arnie Johnson, who claimed that he had committed a murder based off of the fact that he was possessed in the moment. I don't know, you guys. I personally stand right in the center. I'm not sure if he was possessed. I'm not sure if he wasn't. I'm not sure if he was capitalizing off the fact that David was or what the situation was. But I thought, nonetheless, this was a really interesting case. And I loved how it brought Ed and Lorraine Warren in a paranormal case and a true crime. So I thought it'd be really fun to share with you guys. Make sure to let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this case. Do you believe that he was possessed or do you think it's all a hoax? Let me know. And that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, make sure you go ahead and click the subscribe button. Also, just to let you know, I am uploading every single day on my vlog channel as well, which is linked down in my description. So if you want to see more of me, make sure you head on over there. 
I finally said in that video why you guys haven't seen my boyfriend yet, so if you're interested in that, definitely go check it out. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it, and that is it. <laughs> Remember my loves, do all things with kindness, and until tomorrow, I love you guys.